Do you suspect something but don't know what or why? The question you need to ask yourself is whether you really want to know. My wife, with whom we lived for 20 years, the mother of three adult children who were in the 10th and 12th grades, wrote to me while working, asking a simple question. It was, how soon can you get home? I responded by asking, why? She replied that we need to have a serious conversation. I should have returned home, but I didn't. Soon my colleagues in the office noticed that I was completely detached from what was happening. Rebecca had to bring me back to reality. As the CEO of a network of dealerships, I was tasked with overseeing everything. When I showed her the text, she asked if there were problems in my marriage or with one of the children. I had to admit that there was nothing that I was aware of other than the usual problems. Will, asked Rebecca, have there been any minor changes in Mira's behavior? For example, when she talks on her cell phone, does she hang up or stop talking when you enter the room? I didn't notice, I answered, but I was always told that the husband is the last to know. Why is she at home? Rebecca thought. Shouldn't Mira be at work? I texted my wife asking where she was. She replied that she was returning home. Something seemed strange to me, so I called her at work. While I was waiting for an answer, I turned on the voice recording. I asked to speak to Myra Roberts. I was then informed that Mira Roberts, the regional manager, was no longer associated with this branch. She was transferred to the head office from the beginning of next week. As a result, she was given a week's leave with pay to make the necessary preparations. I asked how long ago her promotion was announced. More than six months ago was the lady's answer. Something didn't add up. Why did she just spend four weeks at headquarters for additional training when she was already working directly for the corporation? Why wasn't the family informed about her big career change a few months ago? Rebecca, please answer this for me. If your husband told you on Friday night that he had been promoted and transferred starting early next week, what would your first thoughts be? I said. I'm asking because that's what my wife is going to tell me. Damn, Will, Rebecca answered. Automatically, I would be asking myself what else was going on, because he must have known for quite some time that this was coming. Thank you, I replied. I thought so, too. Now I can go home and face her, knowing that everything she says should be taken with a grain of salt. I bet she will tell me a piece of truth hidden deep down, in a big pile of jewelry. Mira could sell insurance to the elephants if she had to make a dollar, knowing it would take them months to figure out what she was trying to hide. I saw the look of concern on Rebecca's face. She knew I was between a rock and a hard place. I had no idea what to expect, but I knew I was about to play the best poker game of my life. The problem was that I didn't have a poker face. With these thoughts in my head, I sent a message to my wife saying that I was on my way. Mira and I met in high school during the first week of 10th grade. One day during lunch break, one of my friends bet with me that I would not dare to approach the first girl I met and kiss her. I did it. My reward was a loud slap in the face and a trip to the school principal. We avoided each other after that. It was easy since we communicated in different circles. She was a big city girl. I was a local guy through and through. She always kept abreast of events in Kansas City, me not. That all changed the week of prom when we were both in 11th grade. I was filling in for my father's sick employee because my mother dragged him out to some important event. He owned three tow trucks and kept them running around the clock. They were part of his car dealership's operations. It was a busy evening and I was called to help. Some idiot took a turn at Thomas's farm too fast and slid off the road into his cornfield, damaging the right rear tire so badly that the car was undrivable. Mr. Thomas called the police, who called us. It took me about 20 minutes to get there. As soon as I turned around, I drove in reverse and hitched the car. The policeman told me to take her to the impound lot. At this time, I noticed Mira standing next to the police car, wet from the rain and wearing a completely ruined prom dress. I took off my raincoat and handed it to her. Even at that age, she was a beauty. I considered it a 10. I asked the officer if I could give her a ride home before driving to the parking lot. He said, they would be grateful because they would be there for at least another hour investigating the accident. 
I asked the policeman to call her parents and tell them that we had just left. He asked why, and I explained that we had a past, and it was better not to have doubts. Her parents opened the door as soon as we arrived at their house. I went out and helped her down. Then he left to finish his work, completely forgetting that she had taken my raincoat. We didn't exchange a word the entire trip home. I didn't know what was said when Mira returned home. I never asked. I was sitting with my usual group at school during lunch on Monday when Mira approached with a tray of food. Can I join you? She said before being invited to sit down. Can you move? She asked Robbie. I'd like to talk to William. Everyone looked at me as she sat down next to me. I received even more stares after Mira kissed my cheek. This is for defending my reputation on Friday night, Mira said. You'll have to meet me after school so I can return your cloak to you. I have my last gym class, so I'll be late, I explained. If you don't want to keep David waiting, maybe another day will suit you better. David is a thing of the past, just like his father. My dad fired him this morning, Mira replied. If I miss the bus, you'll have to give me a ride home. No problem. I know where you live, I said with a smile. She was waiting for me, just like her parents when we arrived. Her father said he should thank me for my maturity in handling the situation. He then asked why I asked the officer to tell him when we were leaving the scene of the accident. I had to explain about the dispute. He thought it was funny. Mira blushed. William Roberts, I have been mistaken about you for more than two years because of your insolence, said Mira. Now I feel like a complete fool. Is there a way for me to fix this? Can I take you to the movies on Friday night? You can even choose the movie, I said. From that moment, we were inseparable. My friends and I soon learned that she was no snob. After graduating from high school, I began working for my father, learning the automotive business from the ground up. She got a job as a clerk at an insurance company and worked her way up, taking every online course that management recommended. At this point, she worked her way up the ladder and, as far as I knew, was an assistant branch manager. Over the past year, Mira has spent one week a month working at the head office. Along the way, we had three daughters. Until now, I thought life was good. Now my father allowed me to do the day-to-day -day work while he worked to expand the empire. Over the last 20 years, we had expanded to own eight Ford dealerships, so I now spent most of my time in the office. Mira was waiting for me when I arrived home. I looked at the screen on the dashboard. It was 11.20 in the morning. As I got out of the car, I unfastened my tie as I walked toward the door. Looking at her face, she didn't look worried. This gave me the impression that she was not worried. She expected me to fully accept whatever she said. If I'm going to stay home for the day, can I take off my suit to relax? I asked my wife. Or will it just take a few minutes? This will take time, so you should change, Mira said. After changing, I came out and said, Okay, what happened? Mira gave me several pages of emails. I read them. Basically, it was a correspondence between Sylvia Smith, one of her female bosses at the corporation that I had heard about, and one of her administrative assistants going on maternity leave for three months, which developed into an offer to fill the position during her vacation. It was wordy, as if her boss was trying to pressure her into agreeing. After reading, I put the sheets down and went to get a beer. Under pressure, I accepted their offer. I start on Monday. As I see it, I can fly out on Sunday and return home on Friday evening. The corporation found me a furnished apartment, which they rented for a while. The monthly payment was cheaper than the weekly one, Mira explained. As I opened the beer, I noticed that the papers were missing. Mira, where are the papers? I haven't finished reading yet, I asked. She took them out of her briefcase. Sorry, I thought you were done. As soon as she returned them to me, her cell phone rang. When she answered, she said it was her boss, Jake, from the office and left the room. I went into the office and scanned the papers into a Canon printer, sending them to my personal laptop. While I was waiting for her, I thought about this. She didn't understand what I saw, who called. It was Sylvia Smith. Everything she has told me so far has been a deliberate lie. 
for some reason, she didn't want me to know the truth. I texted Rebecca to let her know what I found out. Mira speaks on the phone with her new boss, Sylvia Smith, at their corporate office in Annapolis, Maryland. A few minutes later, she responded that she had found the information available on Google and the corporation's website, sent a message to a distant cousin who lives in the area to see if he had heard anything. Mira still hadn't returned, so I moved on to her briefcase. While I listened for her return, I began to search. It was mostly empty, as I expected. Her notebook contained an Annapolis address and phone number with no name. I quickly took a photo of it with my mobile and closed it. Sorry, there's been a change of plans. I'll have to fly out early Sunday morning, Mira said when she returned. Jake just informed me that Sylvia Smith will meet me personally to help me settle in before my first day on the job. It's all already decided, isn't it? I said firmly. Will, it's not like that, Mira replied. Actually, it is. You're too relaxed for it to be sudden. It makes it clear that there's something you're not telling me. If it was really last minute, you'd be in a panic. I said, colliding with her. At that moment, I saw a look on her face that I had not seen for many years. He last appeared when I told her that Stan Johnston had claimed they were having an affair. Then he also claimed that our second daughter was not mine. When the dust settled on the story, we learned that he was trying to scam us all for family money. I grabbed the car keys and headed to the door. Where are you going? Mira finally asked, showing concern. For our daughters so they don't have to walk home, I shouted. It took me ten minutes to get to school. I stopped by the office to let them know that I was there unexpectedly to pick up my daughters. They will let them know during announcements at the end of the day. I checked our bank accounts. There was no unaccounted money. Since we didn't use checks to pay bills, I put a late notice on it. No check will be honored without my approval. I have also asked them to limit cash withdrawals at any branch except this one. My three little angels were pleasantly surprised. After we loaded them up, we went to Dairy Queen for ice cream. After that, we went to a nearby park so they could eat the burgers and fries they convinced me to buy for them. We had a conversation between father and daughters. It was obvious that they had no idea about their mother's upcoming trip. We were out of the house for almost half an hour. I called Mira, but her cell phone was busy. I wondered if I would return home to get another version. Dad, what's wrong? asked Diana, my eldest. Your mom called me at home to tell me she accepted a three-month position in the corporate office. She's leaving Sunday morning, I said. She told me it just happened this week. Other sources say that's not the case. I'm told it's a permanent promotion and that she's already been in the position for at least six months. My three daughters showed the same face. It was a face of complete shock. Mom and you are getting divorced? asked Dawn, my middle one. You had an affair. Did your mom find out? Oh my God. I thought it came from the mouth of a baby. No, I didn't have an affair, but thank you for asking. There are no signs of a possible divorce since none of our funds are missing. The only thing I know for sure is that that she was lying, I replied. So when we get home, all we know is that what your mom told me might not be true. Could it be that the people you were talking to were lying? Darcy asked. Listen to this and then tell me what you think. I watched my three daughters as they listened to me talk to the receptionist in my wife's office. Sometimes it's better when you can let others form their own opinions. Everyone saw her leave for work, Dad, Dawn said. What did she do this week in her free time? Your guess is as good as mine, because I honestly don't know, I replied. I can find out what's going on, but I'll have to hire professionals and that will take time. For now, girls, we need to decide what to do. We can't stop her from leaving, no matter what, Deanna said. We don't have enough information to make a serious decision. I hate it when you tell us to wait and see, Darcy said, because you have to find out if you can do it before you agree. Here you can't find out, and you might not get the information you need. Perhaps Mom is the one who is having an affair, Dawn said, or maybe she's haunted and needs care. Just then my cell phone rang. It was my wife. Where are you? At the park, the kids are eating burgers and fries. They all got ice cream. 
I figured since it was unannounced, you'd need all the time to get ready, I said. That way you don't have to cook. We decide how we as a family will handle things while you're gone. Why didn't you call me to let me know? You're making it sound like I'm not coming back, Mira said in her defense. You know that's not true. I wanted to scream, but I bit my tongue. As I listened to her, I asked myself why she said this. Was it a mental lapse? The kids will tell you that I tried to call you twice. You were busy talking to someone on the phone. I told them about your plans. They are also wondering what is going on because you are too calm, I replied. We'll see you when we get home. I wrote a message to Rebecca asking her to find out who lived at this address and to verify the phone number, including a photo of him. In less than five minutes, she answered. This was Sylvia Smith's home and mobile number. It was heartbreaking to watch my children talk to their mother. Each of them tried very hard to get their mother to tell them the truth. We just heard her repeating the same thing over and over again. On Sunday morning, after we saw her leave on the plane, I began to relax. Little did my wife know that my father and I had hired a private investigator to follow her. My mom and dad came over on Sunday to see how we were doing. It was difficult for my children to accept the fact that their mother had been lying to all of us for over six months. No matter what you say to your child, he automatically assumes that it is his fault. Sometimes my own mother had to leave her rooms to hide her emotions. On Monday, after I dropped my daughters off, I drove around the block, parked the car, and walked back. I asked to speak with a girl's parenting consultant, Karen Wilson. I explained what had happened over the weekend and asked her to keep an eye on them in case their emotions got out of hand and they couldn't cope. She said she would and praised me for being observant of their needs. When I returned to the office, I read that Rebecca had found out about Sylvia Smith. Her father was the chairman of the board of directors. She herself made her way through the corporation after joining it as an actuary. She was now president a position she had held for four years. It was a tough week, but somehow my kids and I made it through. Two women we sometimes hired agreed to help. They came and cleaned the house and did laundry twice a week. Mira called the girls twice and me once. She arrived home on Saturday morning and flew out on Sunday afternoon. Her total time at home due to plane schedules was less than 24 hours. After she left, all my daughters discussed among themselves what they were trying to understand. Why did she even come home? It was as if she was there, but she wasn't. Her mind was occupied with other things. She was their mother, but she wasn't. I couldn't argue with what they were saying. I tried to hug her and ran into a cold wall of ice. I realized that her family was extremely quiet during this time, which made me wonder what they were told. We had just arrived at our house when my cell phone rang in the car. It was my father. Hey, Dad, we just saw Mira off. I thought I'd take my daughters out for pizza later. Want to join? I said, not giving him a chance to speak. No, I just wanted to remind you that we have an appointment with a lawyer tomorrow morning at nine to discuss this car dealership I want to purchase, he said. Hey, girls, Grandma and I are sending you our love. In the back seat, the girls and he talked for a while as I drove them to our favorite pizzeria. My father took my cue and changed the conversation. I thought it was well played, Dad. Later, after the girls had showered and gone to bed, I called him. We got the first report, Will. It's not as bad as we thought, my father said. This is worse. The affair began long before her month-long training there. We have videos of them together in bars, dancing, holding hands, and showing public affection in a very sexual way. Hell, they were even caught on video going into an adult store and bought erotic toys. I was devastated, but I needed to know. What's his name, Dad, and what does he do? It's not him, Will. It's her boss, Sylvia Smith. They live together as wife and wife, said my father. Mira took off her wedding ring as soon as she got on the plane for the first time. I dropped my cell phone, unable to speak. I was emotionally drained. From somewhere, Diana picked up the phone. She told her grandfather that I was broken. I think she, she forced her grandfather to tell her the truth. We spent the next few hours just crying together until there were no more tears left. Mom and Dad arrived at six in the morning to find Diane and I still holding each other as we slept on the living room couch. After making coffee, we were woken up. 
I was still waking up and gathering my strength when Diane spoke. Grandpa, am I old enough to chase these bitches with my lawyer? Can I sue their employer and both of them together or separately? Diana asked. My parents and I were stunned. Her remark was the last thing we expected. Yes, I think so. But we will have to verify it with a lawyer qualified in this field before I give you a definitive answer, her grandfather replied. Where did this come from? With my dad's approval, I'm studying law as an elective in school, Diana said. I'm going to legally destroy Sylvia and my mother if I can. I've had students for almost two years now, but I won't be able to get my unrestricted driver's license until I'm 18. My goal is to become a lawyer. This comment woke me up. I entered the office and turned on the computer. I went to Facebook and entered my wife's name. This created two Facebook pages. The first I knew about, the second I didn't. Her mistake was that she used the same photo. It opened eight months ago. When Dad saw this, he called the private investigation firm and left a message saying what we had found. Within an hour, it was hacked. It listed pages and pages of times and places of events, which were also confirmed by Silva Smith's Facebook page. Both can be used in court. The bitches confessed to their eight-month unconventional relationship on their personal Facebook pages. Each page declared them the other's consorts. Mira's second Facebook page made no mention of either the children or me. I didn't realize that Diane was reading it at the same time as me. Moms live double lives, Diane said in my ear. The question I have to ask is, which one is the real one for her? Mom made use all brunch. After that, we told Down and Darcy everything we knew. I called the school and told them all my daughters would be missing. While I was dealing with the situation, my eldest daughter handed me the phone. I say it's Karen. Wilson and I don't know what to say. I said, stay with your sisters. I'll be back soon. I head into the office and close the door. Hello, Miss Wilson. I said, how can I help you today? I noticed that the children were called in for a day off. I was wondering if this had anything to do with what we were talking about. She said, yes, we found out that she had been having an affair for at least the last eight months. I said, we found out about it last night after she left. At that time, we were trying to understand why she came at all because she was so far away and lost. Can I ask if he is older or younger? Miss Wilson asked. Any ideas on how I should approach this if asked? With kid gloves and baby steps, it's quite a long time. It's more difficult, I explained. My wife is not having an affair with a man and with her female boss. Damn it, sorry for that oversight. Your daughters and you must be devastated. She replied, for a straight man, it must have hurt you as much as it did my parents when my brother came out. I was on the phone. Diana went to bed when I found out. I was getting my first information from the detective's report. I couldn't stand it and dropped the phone. Diane found me and asked the person who called what was going on. It wasn't a good night for either of us. Add my name to your contact list, said Karen Wilson. If your wife hid this part of herself in plain sight, you can expect that you have been slandered by your common family and friends. I told Dad what Karen Wilson said. Then I had to explain who she was. He called our divorce lawyers and arranged a meeting for us at 1 o'clock that same day. All three of my daughters were getting ready to go. The company sent me an email with an attached file and we printed the pages. It was eight months of their Facebook pages, proving that their relationship began long before her so-called month-long training. It was interesting to watch my oldest daughter use her knowledge of civil law to ask questions in a way that seemed to baffle the divorce lawyer. It became clear that all of my daughters were of legal age to file a claim for disruption of family ties against Sylvia Smith and the insurance company if their HR guidelines were violated. I wrote to Rebecca asking if she could find a way to get a copy of it. She replied that she had already taken care of it last week. My distant cousin had sent me a copy of it along with a detailed explanation of what she knew about Sylvia and Mira's relationship. Twenty minutes later, the lawyers were studying him. This only applied to those who were in the corporation. Rebecca's distant cousin provided us with a wealth of information. I played the recorded conversation with the receptionist, which I saved. Between Facebook Messenger chats, emails Mira provided to me, and my recorded conversations, we could prove that they used their positions at the firm 
as a tool to manipulate me and my daughters for at least six months. As a result, each of my daughters will sue for breaking the family bond against my wife, her mistress, and their employers. I filed for divorce from Mira on the grounds of abandonment and adultery, her mistress for interfering with the marriage, destroying family ties, and her employer for not adhering to his own human relations policies. The most important point was that one of the defendants was the president of the company. They could not claim that they did not know about the situation before. We were all shocked when Diane said we needed a court order that would make it impossible for Sylvia Smith and Mira Roberts to be fired from their jobs until all the court cases were resolved. We didn't want the corporation to sacrifice those two to reduce its liability. Our team of divorce lawyers was shocked. It was a move they wouldn't have thought of, but it made sense. We left the lawyer's office at three o'clock, so the four of us went out for an early dinner. Darcy, always sharp-tongued, said, we needed to get new cell phone numbers, but keep these ones active but switched off until they were delivered. This way, if our mother tries to contact us, it will go to voicemail. Everyone turn off your cell phones now, Diana said. We did it. She collected them and asked our waiter to take them to the hostess. We'll pick them up when we leave. Dad, when you told me what Karen Wilson said this morning, it made me think. The lawyer said they planned it well. For our own protection, we should assume the same. Diane said. Due to what is available on the dark web, all of our computer devices and any other items that may be connected to the internet remain turned off and unplugged until they are professionally scanned for viruses. After dinner, after we picked up our phones, I locked them in the trunk. While we were on our way to Cricket to get new numbers and phones, I decided to buy one extra and not activate it. Before the girls went to school on Tuesday morning, I gave Diane an extra cell phone for Ms. Wilson and asked her to explain why. On Tuesday morning, I went to the bank, canceled all of our joint credit cards, withdrew all remaining money from all of our joint bank accounts, essentially closing them. I removed my name from them. I placed the funds in 90-day certificates of deposit in the names of my wife and me. The bank provided me with printed proof of everything I did. After copying the set for myself, I took them to the lawyer's office. On Friday morning at 9 o'clock Maryland time, I sent my wife Mira a recorded telephone conversation with her former colleague from my old cell phone. It said, This is the last time I say I love you. I then did a factory reset on all of our old phones. I made sure all contact information was removed from them before leaving them at the local park. Mira was with Sylvia when she received the text message. They both overheard his conversation with her former office. Mira said, Damn, he found out about my real job. At 9.15 in the morning, Maryland time, as instructed, the waiter handed them everything at the corporate office in Maryland, wearing a video camera. Mira was shocked when she opened the envelope she had just received. It included a notice that Dean was filing for divorce on grounds of adultery and abandonment because her Facebook page claimed she was in a wifely relationship with Sylvia Smith. He knew everything. It contained four pages of details that would be presented on the first day of trial. They even listed the adult store they went to and what they bought. At nine o'clock in the morning, our time, I went into the office of our cellular operator to report that four phones were missing and asked that the numbers be canceled on Monday morning. Then I paid the current bill in full. Rebecca and I were at work, reviewing what I had done. I wanted her to check with fresh eyes in case I forgot something. Will, you understand that sooner or later they will have to come to you, Rebecca said. Their legal problems are in this state. I don't think they understand that your daughters are of legal age to have their own legal representatives. Luckily, we're one of the few states where you can still sue for breaking family ties. I can imagine what she's doing. Mira will be calling our old numbers, trying to get in touch. Looking for a way to get out of this situation, I said. I have arranged for copies of her lovers and her Facebook pages to be delivered to her parents, her sisters, and her brother today. Once they open them, there will be no denying from her side of the family what she did. What does your daughter want out of all this? Rebecca asked. Diane wants revenge. She can't help thinking about the mental state I was in that night. Diane says no one deserves to be treated like that. 
Dawn and Darcy believe their mother deliberately abandoned us all, I explained. All three of them feel like they need this confrontation. They're having a hard time getting over the fact that their mother lied to them about everything for so long. Darcy puts it well. If she did this to us out of love, what will she do to us if she hates us? I could see Rebecca digesting my words. As a mother of daughters, she's seen it from both sides. I could see the pain and sadness she was feeling. Will, Mira may not realize it now, but she does. She's lost touch with her daughters forever, Rebecca said. There is no turning back from here. The scars of your daughters will forever remain deep in your soul. Rebecca, I didn't see it, but you're right, I said. The worst thing I ever saw was when two girls who hated each other got into a fight. They were dirty, cruel, vengeful, and wanted revenge. When two men fight, it's over when it's over. A woman never forgets and doesn't let go, doesn't it? Boss, she replied, you are a very wise man sometimes. Diana Roberts went to school that Friday morning, only to be called out of class during her first period into Karen Wilson's office. Borrowing a friend's laptop the night before, she scanned all copies of her two sisters and her own documents related to their lawsuit against Sun America Life Insurance and their two employees, Mira Roberts and Sylvia Smith. All information from Facebook was also scanned. She also sent a copy of the court order requiring Sun America Life Insurance to keep two employees in their current positions until all legal matters are resolved. After transferring the data to the flash drive, it was ready. Are you sure you want to do this? Asked Karen Wilson. If we continue, we won't be able to undo this. Everything on that flash drive is already in court records, Diane said. What makes this a news story is that in the eyes of society, we are still minor children. I have a one-page letter with my signature explaining that as a law student in the 12th grade, I found a state law that allowed my sisters and I to take this action. Karen Wilson opened a new email address with a fake name and started a new email. Typing a few words brought up the email addresses of 26 different news organizations. After downloading the data provided by Diane, she typed in the topic, Three Underage Children Taking On Corporate America. In the body of the letter, she wrote, Attached are copies of the legal complaint against Sun America Life, Sylvia Smith, President, and Mira Roberts, Regional Manager, filed by Diane, Dawn, and Darcy Roberts. After checking everything, she clicked send. Diane then watched as she closed the email account. When it hits the media, it only takes one for it to become big news, Karen said. It will cause a domino effect, depending on how this plays out. That's what I'm counting on, Diane said. I want the woman who was once my mother destroyed. Thank you. I'll go back to class. Karen has become attached to Diana, and if everything works out, she will become a prominent lawyer in the field of law that she chooses. Karen wasn't sure if Diane understood that the publicity she was creating could cause Sun America Life stock price to drop. Some may cancel their policies on impulse. After they have received the service on this day, Sun Life will begin to rush to check and study the civil law of divorce because it will not be their specialty. Diana seemed to be trying to corner them. So far, she has performed brilliantly. Two hours later, it became the main news of the day. Local branches were inundated with calls demanding that policies be canceled. Business talk shows began discussing the damage caused by the lawsuit against the president. As a result, their stock prices began to fall. It was discovered that Sylvia Smith had been an open same-sex lover for many years. Mira has been trying to call her husband ever since he texted her. Her cell phone went to voicemail or gave a busy signal. When she called his office, she was told that he was away from work all day. Everyone in the corporate office was in panic mode. Mira and Sylvia expected a divorce, but not this way. She was so careful, keeping everything separate. Karen Wilson should have called William Roberts. Three film crews appeared. Luckily, he answered on the first ring. Sorry to bother you, Will, Karen said. We have a problem that we must solve. Are they girls? Are they okay? I asked. Yeah, they're fine. 
Diane found a way to expose a pending court case to the mainstream media, assuming it would blow up tonight or tomorrow, Karen explained. We already have three news teams and more are expected. Crap, I said honestly. Any suggestions? Except to come and escort them, not really, said Karen. She's going to have to face them sooner or later anyway. I'll gather them here in my office so the four of you can discuss how you're going to handle this. I'll be there as soon as possible. Keep an eye on me because I may have to play the role of my life, I said. I parked my car in the teacher's parking lot and got out, heading towards the main doors. I heard a voice from the crowd of newspeople say it was the father. Ten minutes later, my daughters and I left. Diane walked straight towards the news reporters. We all stood next to her. I will only make one statement on behalf of the family until the court case is over, Diane said. We will not be giving interviews or answering questions while the case is before the court. Let me know when you are ready. The media organized themselves and gave her the signal to begin. My family and I discovered that my father's wife and our mother, Myra Roberts, had been leading a double life for at least eight months. The question we all had to ask ourselves was, which life was real? and which was fake. Add a fact that she couldn't be honest with the four of us about what was really going on in her personal life and work situation. This forced us to hire a detective agency. They discovered that she was living in Maryland with a man named Sylvia Smith in a wife-to-wife -wife relationship to his wife. They both publicly acknowledged their relationship through recently discovered Facebook pages, Diane stated. This begs the question, are they legally married? If so, then my mother, Mira Roberts, is a bigamist. Because Mira Roberts never intended to tell us the truth, we as a family are forced to believe that in her eyes we are a life that she considers not real. We've learned that Sylvia Smith is not only her lover and boss, but also the president of Sun America Life. It makes us wonder if Mira Roberts got her promotion by willingly spreading her legs for her. If she did... That makes her nothing more than an accessible girl who gets paid for her services, Diane said. Was my mother a same-sex lover her entire adult life? Was my father just a front because she wanted children? Did she ever love him? Did she ever love us? Why can't she identify in her other life us as her daughters? Is she ashamed of even creating us? We sisters agree that based on what we have learned, the woman we knew as Myra Roberts, our mother, has died. This new reinvention. Myra Roberts is not known to us, and never will be. That's why the mess that Ms. Roberts and Ms. Smith created is going to court. We turned and walked back to my car. I had mixed feelings, from pride for my daughter to shock. Diane raised both moral and legal issues that I had never thought about in a way that any possibility that Mira had was destroyed forever. We made the two-hour drive to make sure we weren't being followed. Each of us was lost in our own thoughts. My father checked all of our electronic devices to make sure they were safe to use. Nothing was found. Sylvia called Mira on her cell phone, telling her that things had gone from bad to worse. Something just exploded on television that you need to see. Mira walked into her office. Sylvia hugged her tenderly, saying, Remember that I love you. She rewinded and paused the TV. When Mira said she was ready, she pressed play. It began with her husband and three daughters leaving the main entrance of their school. By the end of the world, it was broken. Her eldest daughter, with one statement about the situation, destroyed it, detailing everything she had done in her life. No matter what she tried, Sylvia could not calm her down. We stopped to eat at a small diner about Ann Horaway. When I went to pay the bill, I was told that everything had already been paid. I paid anyway, and the man said he was the owner and wanted to thank our family for what your daughter said today. Your daughter was speaking to a society that needed to see the other side of it. Maybe my ex's opinion will change if she hears this. Son America. Life's lawyers were furious. Mira's daughter raised questions that no one could honestly answer, and they knew it. One person's morality is different from another's. Was Mira promoted for spreading her legs for Sylvia? Wasn't the question? The question is how to prove that this did not happen. What was most infuriating was that a 12th grade student studying law one course a day raised questions that left no doubt that the corporation was trapped. 
Many attorneys couldn't package them that well. They were desperate without a kiss, and it really hurt. The school principal called all the teachers for an emergency meeting as soon as the school day ended, knowing that being a Friday, the school would be empty in minutes. The director was proud. He turned on the TV and showed a video of Diane speaking to reporters. Karen Wilson was very impressed. Diane took her advice to heart. To do this, she had to make every effort to remain focused, determined, and strong. The director then called her attention. When he said they asked about her 20 times today, she was offered two grants if she planned to practice law. Others have requested information about our school because they are interested in sponsoring. I just want to say well done to Mr. Jim Spears and Karen Wilson for their participation. One for teaching law so effectively, and the other for mentoring her. Mira finally calmed down enough to try calling Diane's cell phone. He called and was answered. Hey, the price is 40 for a quarter. I'm in my usual place, said the voice that she didn't recognize. Who are you and what are you doing with my daughter's phone? Asked Mira. The person on the other end ended the call. She went to her original Facebook page and tried to contact her daughter that way. She soon discovered that she had been unfriended and blocked. She repeated the same process with her other daughters to find them in the same way. It was safe to assume that Will would have done the same. She called her parents home. Her father answered. Hello, father, said Mira. Hello, Mira, her father answered. Let me make this clear. We saw the statement of our granddaughters. We've seen printed Facebook pages of both your lovers and yours. Will sent them to all of us, and we remember the reason you told us why you were leaving Will. Our daughter, but I have to agree with my granddaughter. We no longer know who you are. Mira, you are dead to us. With that, her father hung up. Mira lost consciousness again. Instead of going home, my daughters and I went to spend the night with their grandfather. We all bought enough clothes to last us through the weekend. This gave us a chance to renew our cooperation. I texted Karen Wilson to let her know we were okay and where we were. I sat in my father's office and just looked at what I did and didn't know. My daughter's comments to a reporter made me question my entire marriage under a microscope, trying to figure out what truths I could live with. When my mother came in, it wasn't all a lie, my mother said quietly. If that were the case, your daughters would not be standing next to you. It's normal that you question everything. Keep in mind that you had a good life until Mira became emotionally involved with Sylvia. What does emotion have to do with it? I asked. Do you think it was emotion or desire that started their romance? At first I would say it was friendship, then desire. The mother said, Apparently they were together 24-7 days a week when Mira was at head office. Their friendship grew. They came close. It only takes drinking too much for something to happen. If this happens at first, there is a feeling of guilt and shame. Mira may have drank more to ease the pain, giving Sylvia the opportunity to begin seducing her mind. It starts with a gentle touch or a gentle caress to show you care. Are you suggesting that what Mira did was not intentional? I said, starting to raise my voice. Not right away. Look, no one plans to fall in love, it just happens, Mom said. In the end, she acted deliberately. I don't think she thought about the price she would have to pay. Otherwise, she would not have ended the marriage in this way. Mom, Mira planned all this. The two of them made up a story that they thought us suckers would buy. They planned for us to slowly grow apart until one day someone would appear to serve me, I said. This way, Mira could hide their relationship until the divorce was over and keep their secrets safe. Once our daughters accept the divorce, Silva will be introduced to them as a close friend. How did you know that? Mom asked seriously. Her brother called me this morning after receiving copies of the Sylvia and Mira's eight-month relationship. He explained that Mira told them a week before she left, when Mira was undergoing training. She found out that I was having an affair. I revealed. According to Mira, we have been trying to work things out for the last two months, but we have nothing it came out. That's why she's leaving me. Do your daughters know about this? Mom asked. Now we know, said three voices. 
Mom and I both turned and looked. All three of my daughters heard everything. Damn it, Dad. Mom was grooming you to be a scapegoat, Dawn said. If she had walked away with it, we would have believed her, Darcy said. She wanted to ruin our relationship with you. I looked at my mother. Her face was white. I rushed and caught her before she fell. Dad and I got up early on Saturday. We went to check out my house. The reporters were sitting there waiting for us. We funnily drove past a nearby dealership we owned to find even more people sitting there. Good thing I shorted some Sun America livestock on Thursday. We're going to need funds to buy a new house, Dad said, unless we can find a way to keep those dogs away from us. Go to the dealership, Dad. I'll go out and talk to them. We both know what I'm going to say will reach Mira and her mistress, I said. So let's give them something to think about. He pulled in, and I got out of the car and walked up to the reporters. I made sure that our dealership name would be visible behind me if I was being filmed. How are your daughters holding up? Asked an ABC spokesman. Like most children, I think. At first, they blame themselves. Then, as they understand and accept, they begin to ask themselves if everything their mother taught them was a lie, I said. They're looking to me for answers, and unfortunately, I don't have them. It's something that can't be easily explained. How did you find out? Was the next question. My wife texted me two weeks ago on Friday and said, come home, we need to talk, I replied. I said, where are you? She said, on her way home. Something didn't seem right, so I called where she worked. Let me replay the conversation. They listened to it. You must understand that at that time, I was still convinced that she was only an assistant branch manager and nothing more. She told me when I returned home that she was under pressure to be sent to corporate headquarters for three months to replace a woman who was going on maternity leave. Now we know that none of this was true, I said. On the Friday after my daughter's statement, her uncle, my wife's brother, called me to tell me what Mira told them. It turns out that Mira found out that I was having an affair while she was at headquarters for a month. She returned home unexpectedly at last attempt to save our marriage, but it didn't work out. So she's leaving me, I continued. It seemed that Sylvia Smith and Mira were conspiring against me to make me extreme. Mira was going to continue to travel back and forth, gradually creating the impression that frequent flying was making our relationship difficult and causing us to grow apart from each other. She was going to file for divorce and give notice me, as soon as it starts to seem like I've stopped trying. That way, once our daughters accepted the divorce, Sylvia could be introduced to their family and our children as a dear friend, I explained. They failed when we discovered their duplicate Facebook pages, I finished. Do you think they were trying to make it appear that you weren't cooperating with her? Asked the reporter. It seems like if they could blame me for ruining our marriage, they could damage my relationship with my parents and daughters forever, I said firmly. For what purposes, I don't know. Maybe you can find a way to ask them. Was their goal to use my daughters as weapons against me? From what I know, it certainly seems like that. Did Sylvia want to introduce my daughters into an unconventional lifestyle in every way? Like she did with my wife? With that, I walked back to my dad's car and got inside. My father had a huge smile. He heard everything. Will, the fact that you worked on commission for a year definitely paid off, he said proudly. You ask questions in their minds that they will try to answer for days without making accusations. You did it in such a way that you presented yourself as a man who was simply trying to protect his daughters. For the first time in days, I laughed. Dad, there is no chance that any judge will allow Sylvia or Mira to talk to these girls without a third party present. True, but the fact that you framed Sylvia as the aggressor puts extra pressure on the organization. It's professionalism and personal relationships. Implying that she might be homosexual was pure genius. It also puts more responsibility on the corporation itself, he pointed out. He, we got home just in time to join the ladies for brunch. We explained that reporters were still camped outside our home and dealership. My mom decided it would be a girl's shopping day out of town. Dad was going to play golf, which is clearly not my game, so I thought I'd spend a few hours in the office. Dad told me to use his truck if I wanted to go out. 
in case they were watching my car. I was just about to leave when Miss Wilson called. She wanted to talk about the girls and their return to school on Monday, suggesting they meet and discuss it over lunch. I agreed because the company of someone outside the family was just what I needed. I told her to text me her address, and I would pick her up. I hope you don't mind, I said. I'm wearing jeans. She laughed and said that too. I got out of my dad's truck and walked up to her door. Karen heard me knock and opened the door. I recorded your statement to the media this morning. I thought it was brilliant. Would you like to watch it? Asked Karen Wilson. With pleasure, I replied. Karen turned on her direct TV system. Once she found it, she hit play. It was short, direct, and clear. I looked like I had no answers, but some knowledge of what was done, but not why. This has been a topic of discussion on most talk shows all day, raising questions about their behavior. This recorded phone conversation shows how insidious their behavior was towards you. It made you untouchable, Karen laughed, stressing that as far as your family knew, you all didn't know what was going on until the last 14 days. Really, all I was trying to do was take the media attention away from my family, I said. I'm driving my dad's truck because they sat in front of our house last night so we couldn't even get home. Any idea what you'd like for dinner? She knew. The place was not very famous, so we could enjoy some privacy. Karen told me about what happened at school yesterday after I took my daughters out. I was surprised, but told her that I knew Diane planned to continue practicing law. She asked how they were handling the situation. We've all had moments when all that raw grief comes out. They were devastated to learn that their mother had falsely accused me of having an affair and used it as an excuse to explain why our marriage ended. Karen said it must be hard to take. I said it made me better understand what political people face every day. The truth really doesn't matter. It all depends on someone's feelings. I don't know Mira and Sylvia's motives or plans. I just know that I have to keep pushing because none of them have shown that they are willing to tell the truth. We ended up with a long walk in the local park before I took her home. It was nice to have someone to talk to who wouldn't judge, but would offer support when needed. Karen became my friend. Everyone returned home to my father when I returned. The girls had a wonderful day shopping. The children all hugged me. Darcy whispered, Dad, I smell a note of woman's perfume. Who is she? I said it was just a friend. Mom gave me a beer and whispered in my ear, suggesting that I come into the den and watch some news. Things are getting interesting. If you ever want to stir things up, just ask questions that can't be answered. Liberals and socialists thrive on this. My short statement diverted media attention from the political topic of the day. They spent time discussing the morality of my family situation. How will the courts view what most now believe is a direct attempt by Sylvia Smith and Mira Roberts to expose children to unconventional lifestyles? Will this be considered corruption? It was noted that same-sex lovers tried to undermine me with what they were planning. Sylvia was devastated. Her father called to report Mira's husband's announcement, saying that the board of directors was calling an emergency meeting. His perception of what was happening raised many questions. As a result, Mira and she watched TV, waiting for it to show again. When they watched it, they knew that. I knew when. Mira's husband's questions were very harmful, especially when he questioned what Sylvia had planned for his children. The only thing keeping my career in place is a damn court order, admitted Sylvia. If the board could fire me right now, they would. He looks like a man who has no answers, just a lot of questions. Who is trying his best to protect his children? He made it look like we had it all planned out from day one, Mira said. It's all my fault, because I couldn't tell you that I stopped loving him long ago before how I met you. I wrote a message to the father about the ages of your daughters, Shiva said, to make it clear that almost all of them are adults. Your husband was smart. He knew how the media would play it out. True. But the reason for all this was the way I handled my situation. You and I both know this. I overthought and lied to ease people's pain. I get what I deserve. You're innocent, we both know that. I pursued you because with you I could allow the hidden me to come out. Mira, it took you much longer than it did for me to come to the realization that you can no longer live a lie. 
Sylvia said. I was attracted to you for years, but I had no idea, so I kept my distance. Finding you in that gay bar that night, sitting alone, signaled me to find out. The moment you sat down that night and joined me, I knew that was why I invited you straight to my hotel or home, Mira replied. Making love that night freed me. The next morning I realized that I would never be able to return to the shell from which I had freed myself. I understand, but the cost of this has not yet been determined, Sylvia said. Dean, your husband is understandably offended, like your three daughters, but for different reasons. Your behavior makes them question who and what they are. Life. Dean would have to believe that in your eyes he was nothing more than a piece of crap that you had been using for twenty-plus years. This truth has killed many people and driven some to suicide. But I love him. But I was never in love with him, Mira said. Mira, this is what the woman who was caught sleeping with her own brother by her husband is saying to explain her actions, Sylvia said. It doesn't matter what you say or do. Right now, all you're going to do is dig yourself a deeper hole. What should I do? I still want a relationship with my daughters. Dean will always be in their lives, Mira explained. We have to somehow solve this problem. Everyone at home was shown what Dean knows. You made things difficult by lying to your family and placing the blame on your husband. Sylvia said, He does what he does because you gave him no choice. Not out of revenge, you directly defamed his name to protect your reputation. Your daughters are your main problem. They see you destroy your whole family so you can be with me. Silva watched as Mira became lost in thought, no longer knowing what she could say. Mira's behavior, no matter how you look at it, changed relationships and lives forever. The problem was that Mira always loved Dean as a brother and not as a lover. So when they made love, he gave her all the physical, emotional, and mental part. He made love. In her eyes, it was nothing more than a physical act to satisfy her desire. She could see it. Mira could not. She felt sorry for Dean. He didn't deserve this. No one did. That's when Silva noticed a crowd of media representatives in front of their house. Dean and Diana managed to attract media attention. I was surprised to see someone in the real estate office on Sunday. Amy Bronson recognized me immediately. We studied together at school. I asked her to provide me with comparisons for homes like mine on the local market. She quickly provided me with a few pages. I listed my house for 20000 above the average price. She agreed to communicate directly with my wife. While I was signing the paperwork, she looked up and got the phone number for Sun America headquarters. I took out the envelope and handed it to her. This is a handwritten letter giving my wife the right to come in and take what she wants from the house before it is sold. Inform her that my daughters and I will remove our clothes and personal items by the end of this week. What she does not wants to stay with the house, I said. You have my contact information. I'm looking for a house with four bedrooms, a pool, a lot, and privacy. Dean, is the house only in your name, or do I need her permission to sell? Asked Amy. It's in my name only, so let her know that the funds will be held in trust by my lawyers until the divorce is finalized, I replied. I'm not going to do anything that gives her the opportunity to sue me, I said. I want this to end. Mira has already offended us enough. Either way, this is an equal property division state. Amy Bronson watched Dean leave after saying goodbye. Dean was in a lot of pain. If Mira was a girl who liked girls all her life, she hid it well. No one knew. If it was just an affair, then damn, why did she advertise it on Facebook like she did? Their whole situation didn't make sense and, unfortunately for Dean, never would. This will haunt him for the rest of his life. I was in my office early Monday morning alone. I had just poured coffee from a fresh mug I made when the phone rang. Roberts Ford Motors, good morning, how may I help you? I asked. A man's voice replied, I would like to speak to Dean James Roberts, please. You're talking to him, I replied. May I ask who's calling? I am Charles Anthony Smith, chairman of the board of directors of Sun America Life. And if you agree, I would like to speak with you informally. About what? I asked. To keep this mess that my daughter and your wife have created out of the media, he said. We didn't publish the material in the first place, I said. 
He was in the public domain here in the area. My daughter and I were just trying to calm the situation. As of this morning, it looks like we may be able to go home since the media seems to have left. I was told it was orchestrated by our legal team, he said. Explain to me what happened on Friday. About 11 in the morning that day, I received a call from Karen Wilson, who, at my request, was keeping an eye on them in case of emotional outbursts. When she called, there were three or four news crews at the door. She asked me to take them out of the school, I said. That was the first time we knew there was a problem. The school asked us to try to get them to leave because it was disrupting classes, I said. My eldest daughter made a statement and we left. I didn't know what she was going to say. After we left, they left too. Your daughter was cold, determined, and angry. Her statements were mainly aimed at her mother. You should be proud, Charles Smith said. She raised questions like you that cannot be answered, but both were done to show your wife and my daughter what their behavior implied. I agree, it's a hell of a mess, and that's only part of the problem. The lies that were told were to protect themselves. It was premeditated and planned. Just so you know, I have received signed statements from Mira's family saying she left me because she discovered that I was having an affair while she was in Maryland. This last visit home was a vacation for two months so she could try to save our marriage, I said. You know that I have six pages of email correspondence between your daughter and my wife over five days with their corporate email addresses, which was essentially a deception to make me think that Mira was pressured into accepting temporary position at headquarters for three months. Honestly, I had no idea. I'm going to a board meeting about this right now, Charles Smith said. I didn't even know they were lovers until it came out. Now I understand why you both asked the questions you did. In your situation, I would, too. I don't know what the council will decide, whether it was you or yours daughter, who requested the injunction preventing yous from firing them. It was my daughter, Deanne, in 12th grade and taking law as an elective, I said prudely. Tell her I don't like having my hands tied, he said with a laugh. She made our legal team look like incompetent fools. If it weren't for the injunction, Sylvia and Mira would be fired right now. Thank you for talking. Now I can be honest with what I know. I had a huge smile on my face when Rebecca walked in, so I had to explain why. You do realize, Dean, that he could have been lying to get you out, Rebecca said. Why do you think I told him about Sylvia and Mira's letters? If he knew about them and found out that I made copies, it strengthens the fact that they acted together to deceive me. If he didn't know, he will soon have copies of them. Into your own. Hands? I explained. He can't prove that we got the media involved, because if it were us, the media would have already found it out. Dean, be careful. They'll be looking for any legal clue to get out of this situation, Rebecca reminded him. Amy Bronson just got off the phone with Mira Roberts. The conversation went surprisingly smoothly. Both behaved professionally. Amy could tell Mira was shocked to hear the house was for sale. Amy explained that after this weekend, she would appreciate it if Mira took what she wanted as soon as possible, since she needed to know what would be left with the house after the sale. Mira was surprised to learn that after the deal was closed, the check would be made out to the lawyers and would be held until the divorce was finalized. Mira asked her how Dean was taking it. Amy refused to answer, but told her that her soon-to-be ex-husband and her daughters were forced to move because of mainstream media. Amy wanted Mira to realize the damage she was doing to the rest of her family. The board of directors met behind closed doors for several hours. The share price continued to fall. The head of the legal department had to tell them everything step by step. It was clear that until the court cases were resolved, Sylvia and Mira could not be fired. Hell, they couldn't even be transferred to other positions. The council decided to try mediation first before going to court on all matters, except Mira and Dean Roberts's divorce. It was decided to write a statement to the media to cool the situation. Breaking through the media crowd to leave their front door was a nightmare for the two lovers. Someone took a photo of Mira with a shocked expression and posted it on Instagram with the caption, The Moment You Get Caught. This led to a full-page story about the entire situation with unnamed sources. Mira learned from the newspapers that no one in her family wanted anything to do with her anymore because of the damage her actions had caused. 
Sylvia said it would take time for things to settle before they could start fixing things. I was surprised to receive an advance copy of Sun America Life's statement, which admitted that the only reason Sylvia and Mira were not fired was because a court order forced them to remain in their jobs until the legal cases were resolved. They spent a long time trying to shift public opinion by emphasizing that they did not condone any adult's deliberate attempts to corrupt a minor. What happened in this case may never be known, but the visibility of this ongoing situation makes it clear that it must be resolved, which is why we immediately begin mediation. I called my father, who gave the order to sell his shares. This turned out to be the right decision. I went to pick up my daughters. Looks like we weren't on the front page anymore. Now there was another side. We went to our house and started packing what we wanted to keep. It was painful to see my daughters leave behind personal items that their mother gave them. We were going to stay with my parents until we found a new place. This house made it too difficult for all of us to live here. Again. We worked until we were exhausted, so we only finished on Friday. On Saturday, Dad and I moved everything into storage. Somehow we survived. Sylvia was angry at her father because the board of directors left them to fend for themselves. Both Mira and she were informed that once the matters were resolved, they would be fired. As soon as they were informed of this, they both began looking for work. So far, the prospects did not look very good. On Saturday morning, while my daughters and I were looking at houses with Amy Bronson, she informed me that Mira would be flying out the following weekend to pack and arrange for delivery of what she wanted. She put a few people through it, but most wanted to see what was left before making any decisions. I broke the news to the girls that night. On Sunday, my three girls went out and Diane took them. Karen Wilson and I went out to a lunch meeting. I learned from Sylvia's father that Mira and she were coming next Friday. I was worried that my stubborn daughter would clash with her mother. Karen and I were walking around the mall. I wanted to see the styles and quality of furniture being sold in the retail market. That's when we met Jace and Janet Sexsmith, Mira's parents. We bought coffee from the counter and sat down together. Their family was just as devastated as ours. I introduced Karen to them, explaining our relationship. In a conversation with four of us, I learned how worried my daughters were about me. All three of them asked Karen to keep an eye on me. When we found out about this, my father-in-law and I could not hold back our tears. We all agreed that if Mira really was unconventional orientation, none of us knew. I found out that the children wondered why they had not heard from them and learned that the grandparents kept their distance because they thought the children would remind them of their mother and therefore avoided contact. On Thursday, Amy Bronson took Karen and me to see a house that had recently come on the market. It had five bedrooms with two master bedrooms, a built-in swimming pool with an outdoor kitchen. I really liked the three-space garage with its open floor plan. It was available because it was a sale after the owner's death. I proposed on the spot. Late on Friday evening, Sylvia and Mira arrived. They took a taxi back to what was our old house. Looks like my three daughters left her a surprise. On a pile of cut-up photographs, they left all the sentimental personal items that Mira had bought for them. They wanted to send a message, and it was received. On Saturday night, Karen, the kids and I were having dinner at Ruby Tuesdays when I saw Mira and presumably Sylvia walk in. My daughter Diane went to the toilet and didn't see them. Karen and I noticed Diane walk past their table and Mira said something. No matter what my daughter Diane Myra said, it made her run out crying. Karen, watching this, turned her head towards me and gave me a very sensual kiss. We later learned that Mira tried to contact her family, but it was too soon for them. Mediation failed. We went to court. Sun America. Life appealed the court order and won because they publicly admitted their liability. The court ruled that they accepted liability. The only question was how much. Sylvia and Mira were escorted out of the corporate building with their personal belongings the next day. Their father was forced to resign as chairman of the board of directors. We haggled back and forth, but we made a deal. I bought a house and my daughters were delighted. Karen helped me pick out the colors we wanted and refinish some of the floors. 
My divorce was moving forward, and the old house was purchased by a mystery buyer for full asking price with a quick closing. Once the documents were signed, the lawyers held the funds in trust. Sun America Life decided to have the trial before a judge only. It was a one-day hearing. The judge didn't like that the corporation was trying to reduce its liability because it couldn't control people's personal behavior. Our lawyers implied that Sylvia Smith's position gave her the impression of being in control of the situation. When the dust settled, Sun America Life lost big. Each of my daughters received half a million plus legal fees. I was awarded two million. This was twice as much as my lawyers were willing to settle in mediation. The divorce was uncontested, and she was awarded half of our marital property according to state law. I never saw her, she never showed up in court. It turned out that the new owners of my old house were Sylvia and Mira. They sued their former employer and won. As for Karen and I, we just take it day by day. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one.